Dear brethren in Christ, today's gospel you heard from St. Luke begins by saying the two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way, what had taken place on the way. Now, since nobody knows himself better than he himself, so it's better for me to recount to you what had taken place in my life on the way to this 50th celebration of my priesthood. When I received my first communion at the age of eight, I became an altar boy and served mass every day at the local parish where I was baptized. At that time, my parish church, St. Catherine of Alexandria, was served by many local priests. In Malta, where I come from, since we don't have parish rectories, priests live with their own parents as long as they are alive. Therefore, every ordained priest is ordained for his local village or city where he was born. Now, the city in which I was born, called Zaytun, was very blessed with many priestly vocations. I am sure the main reason was that Maltese families always prayed for and encouraged their sons and daughters to think about a religious vocation. And another reason was that Maltese families were very numerous in the time of my upbringing. 15, 16, and 20 children were very common in a family in those times, not more, unfortunately, anymore. At the time of my ordination in 1959, in my parish, there were about 20 other priests serving a population of 8,000 people, one priest for every 400 individuals. Hence, I decided to go to the missions, where the shortage of priests was always a big problem. Why did I go to Brazil? Why did I choose that country? Well, while, was, while I was finishing my last year of theology course at the university in Valletta, a Brazilian bishop by name of Don Geraldo Fernandes came to my seminary asking for priests to go and serve in his new diocese of Londrina in the state of Paraná. Brazil has 22 states. And so I promised him that upon my ordination, I would go to his diocese of Londrina. There I stayed seven years. Of course, local conditions at that time were very primitive. No electricity, no phones, no running water, no roads to speak of, no sanitary conditions or facilities, etc., etc. But the local parishioners loved their parish and their priest very much. The priest was for them their savior in everything. So I gave my first seven years of my priesthood to the missions in Brazil. Second question, how did I end up in America, from South America to North America? Why in the Diocese of Oakland, California? Well, it seems that divine providence had other plans for me. While I was in Malta for a short visit from Brazil, the first and new bishop of the Diocese of Oakland, by name of Floyd Begin, happened to come to Malta 
during Vatican II sessions, seeking priests and seminarians for his new diocese, knowing that Malta had many vocations. And Rome is only a 50 minutes flight to Malta. He asked me if I wanted to come to his diocese of Oakland. Well, I informed him that I was still serving in the diocese of Londrina in Brazil. So he proposed to me that if I, that if I ever decided to change my mind, I will be most welcome to serve in his diocese. And this is what I did after I finished another year and a half in Brazil. And so in 1966, I arrived in the Diocese of Oakland to serve the first parish of St. Louis Bertrand. To be frank with all of you, parish life at that time was very different from what it is today. Pastors governed with an iron hand. I said governed because most of them considered the parish as their own personal possession. Hence, rotation of assistant pastors, or what we call to today vicars, was very frequent. If the pastor did not like anything in his assistant, he will ask the bishop to remove him. And the bishop, 99% of the time, complied, obliged him. In my 31 years of priesthood of service in the Diocese of Oakland, I was moved eight times. <laughs> Serving in two parishes as pastor. I have to say that in those times, seniority was a big factor in the appointment of pastors. And also, foreign priests, like myself, not Irish though, were not given any preference to become pastors. Well, those were other times that is now bygone history. I could have stayed for more years serving in the Diocese of Oakland, but they did not, I did not like what was taking place at that time. The diocese was becoming very liberal. And I, by nature, as you all know, I am very traditional. So to take, I took early retirement. From Oakland, I went to Arizona. I served three years in that diocese in St. Stephen's Parish in the city of Chandler or Sun Lakes. And I served with a pastor who was not only traditional, but he was super conservative. <laughs> he didn't even give me a key to the parish. <laughs> 